I'd like to also introduce now Emmy Mendoza, who's going to be speaking about uh, specific outreach tools for plastic bag reduction. And Emmy's name is nearly synonymous with the San Jose plastic bag <laughs> ban. Whenever that issue comes up, Emmy's name is right there next to it. Um, she's been working with the city of San Jose for three years after completing her master's degree in urban planning at San Jose State. She's a board member on the American Planning Association local chapter. And her urban planning training is being, uh, being applied at the City of San Jose's Environmental Services Department. And she does community outreach and education related to recycling and plastic bags. And we are very pleased to have Emmy speak. Yeah, thank you. I have all my props. Um, what I'm going to talk about mostly is, um, uh, I was looking at the, the agenda, key outreach tools for plastic bag reduction. And I wanted to share um, uh, some of our tactics. A lot of our tactics have really been about being out in the community, talking to as many people as possible about what it means to ban plastic bags, what is behind it in terms of why is the city looking at this issue, um, we have uh, free bags that we give out to the community and to every neighborhood association, the Lions Clubs, the school, the kids that we visit. We give out a free bag, but our policy is that we never give somebody a bag without telling them why we are looking at banning plastic bags. So it's not just a freebie, it's not just swag. Um, they have to listen to a presentation and then we give them a bag. And also you give somebody a free reusable bag and they're your friend forever. You know, they love you, they think you're just the best thing ever. Um, so that is a lot of what I'm going to cover is, um, is basically the presentation that we do. But there are a few other things that we're also going to cover in addition to the outreach tools, uh, a little bit about the EIR and a little bit about enforcement because I think those are some of the big questions that people, um, I get, once the ordinance went into a, uh, was passed in December, I've been getting phone calls from uh, maybe some of you, but from people from as far away as Atlanta and Mendocino and um, all over. So people are excited about um, banning plastic bags. Um, so let me just get started because there's a lot to cover. The first thing to talk about is what the ordinance is actually going to do. It's going to be a ban on plastic bags and there will be a store charge, we're really careful to call it a store charge, on paper bags of 10 cents. Paper bags have to be at least 40% recycled content and the store has to charge, the minimum amount is 10 cents. If a store wanted to charge 15 cents for a bag, they could do that, but they have to charge at least 10 cents. And we call it a store charge because it, um, the, the whole amount is retained by the store. None of this comes back to the city. So um, sometimes there's a lot of discussion about Prop 26 and um, this new fee and does Prop 26 apply to this, to this this fee on paper bags. And our response to that is that this is uh, a tool that we're using or the, the fee is something or the store charge is something that is um, going to dissuade people eventually from, from using paper bags uh, and will move people towards reusable bags. Uh, so, and also that the store retains the whole amount that none of it is, none of this is creating income for the city. So let's see, also in San Jose, it applies to all retailers and we have another year or it'll go into effect in January of 2012. Um, but in terms of how this whole process started, I wanted to just mention a couple of key things. Um, in 2007 was when the city of San Francisco banned plastic bags. In 2007 was also when the city of San Jose adopted the green vision. The green vision uh, is the, the mayor, there was a new mayor at the time, Chuck Reed, and he put out 10, um, 10, uh, e 10 goals for economic development that have a positive environmental impact. It was a, it's a big statement for the city of San Jose. We, uh, there's a lot of excitement about it. So San Francisco has banned plastic bags, the Green Vision has come out, and then Council Member Chu and a couple of other council members together brought the issue of banning plastic bags in San Jose, brought that forward in early 2008. And that was when they called um, uh, people from my department from environmental services 
and they said, the American Chemistry Council is here, the California Grocers Association is here, we would like you to come up to a meeting right now, <laughs> yep, right now, and start meeting, and meet with us right now and start talking about this issue, and then we would like for you to continue that, that um, discussion with these stakeholders. So the American Chemistry Council, California Grocers Association, became a part of a stakeholder group. Trish and other environmental um, uh, representatives also joined, representatives from other cities. Eventually, it became a process where all, pretty much every other week, we met and sat down and talked through the issues related to banning plastic bags. We were learning things from all the other cities that were looking at this issue, from San Francisco, Oakland, then there was a lawsuit. So uh, we were learning about everything, um, f about banning plastic bags uh, from the beginning um, th with that stakeholder group. We also took, um, we also did also, we also went out to the communities, but um, when we talk about the stakeholder process, a lot of it does focus on meeting with those organizations and meeting with um, a number of stakeholders in the, in the South Bay. I wanted to just give a shout out to the Recycling and Waste Reduction Commission. We call them the RWRC. They are an advisory group to the Board of Supervisors. They are another um, uh, body, political body, that um, took on this topic and was, it has been looking at this issue for the whole South Bay. So all of the cities in, in the South Bay are looking at stormwater um, issues and so um, there's a reason why Palo Alto also already banned plastic bags. Um, so the RWRC is another body that has been involved. And then after about a year and more, the city council finally, finally gave us a direction and told us to go ahead and develop an ordinance to ban plastic bags. And, and, they, and the direction at that time was um, figure out what to do or how to address the issue of paper bags. So I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a second. These slides are a lot of the slides that we use in our outreach. When we're talking to the community and we start talking about plastic bags, we put out the question, where do all these bags come from that we use to carry our groceries? Um, paper bags in the United States, 14 million trees are used every year to produce those bags. And uh, plastic bags are not made from, um, from oil, they're made from natural gas. But if you took all of the natural gas that was used to make plastic bags in the United States, it would be the equivalent of 12 million barrels of oil. All of that is to make 38 billion bags that every year are, are designed for, um, for being used once. Hold on, I'm gonna being used once for an average of about 12 minutes. That's the time it takes to bag all your groceries, get them into the car, get it home, and then after, afterwards, lots of times those bags are, are reused for trash can liners, for example. But, um, and this is where I always have my props. And I, tell, I show people, let's see. So those kinds of bags are designed for a single use. These bags are designed for multiple uses. These bags are designed to be used hundreds of times. And I think once um, the community starts picking up on that, they're, they're realizing that, yeah, that, that makes sense. And that's, a, that's one of the things with this issue is that communities, um, especially during these economic times, people are remembering uh, the uh, past era when our grandparents didn't have bags and our grandparents reused um, um, items over and over again. We didn't have a disposable society, and um, and we do now. And I think the current economic situation makes us want to be more careful about how we use our resources. Wanted to um, talk about this slide as well. This is another one that we show to people to, that gives people an idea of how much energy is used to create a paper bag and to create a plastic bag. So it's in BTUs, British Thermal Units, or joules, it's the amount of energy that's used to create um, uh, these products and gives people an idea of, of some equivalent um, uh, ideas that they, people can relate to. So I wanted to show you that slide, and I've shown you that one. So I'm also, I work in integrated waste management for the city of San Jose with environmental services. So we are also looking at this issue from the point of view, from the recycling point of view. And um, in San Jose, we have been trying to recycle plastic bags for over 15 years. But in, I love the pictures of, that I think Phil had, of the, um, it's called a materials recovery facility where they're processing recycled materials. But plastic bags 
are really not designed to go through that kind of machinery. That plastic bags are an item and film are an item that actually gets caught in the machinery. And this is a picture of, of some of that machinery that um, once that conveyor belt of materials has gone through and some of it is jammed now into the machinery, that whole conveyor belt has to stop. And when you stop a work line like that, that is money that is being lost. That is work that is not going on because these machines are not designed for this kind of material. The other picture that's there is a picture of uh, plastic bags that were being stockpiled that in the end um, were, had very little value. Uh, again, the economic uh, conditions affect, uh, recover, re affect recycled markets as well, or recycled materials markets. So plastic bags are, a, um, are not an easy thing to recycle for all kinds of reasons. I'm gonna go quickly through all this because there's a lot to cover. Um, impacts on watershed. Environmental services oversees waste management and also watershed division is a part of environmental services. So we are in partnership, we work in partnership with our watershed folks and um, these slides come from them. Um, I tell the community about, or I show this picture to the community and it looks like a lot of squiggly lines really, but this is a picture of the watershed for the South Bay. And I talk about how San Jose might not be known as a water-rich neighborhood, a water-rich um, community, but we have a lot of creeks and we have a lot of rivers. A lot of, um, in the downtown area, the Guadalupe River area is full of trails and lots of access. A lot of money has gone into the redevelopment of that area. So it's a huge, there, these creeks are a huge asset for us, but um, I also tell the community that a number of these creeks are, um, are being regulated because of the amounts of trash that are being found in these creeks. So those purple lines, I don't know if you can see them in the, in the slide, are the Guadalupe River, Coyote Creek, and Silver Creek in San Jose are the ones that are declared uh, impaired by trash. The star in the middle is the downtown area, City Hall, and San Jose State. Um, this is an up-close picture of that. So on one side you'll see Guadalupe River, on the other side you'll see Coyote Creek. The red dots are the outfalls, that is the places where the storm drains empty out into the creeks, into those creeks. And then these are the storm drains in that area. So this is how we get the point across to the community that if there's litter in the streets and it has a chance to get into the storm drains, it has a chance to get into the creeks, and it has a chance to get into the bay, and it has a chance to get into the Pacific Ocean in the end. So um, we also tell the community about um, other, commu other, other cities that have already taken action on this issue. Um, we, will always get, we will always get somebody who raises their hand and says, oh yeah, I was in Germany and I went to the grocery store and it was so embarrassing, I was the only person in the store that didn't have my own bag. And it's like, yep, around the world this issue is being um, considered. And in fact, in the United States, we're one of the last countries to, um, to take action on this issue. So on the one side is you know, some of the cities that have taken action, Washington, D.C. And on the other side in California, some of the cities that have also taken action, and then the last three, uh, the ones that have actually done an EIR more, most recently in the last couple of months. This is a slide from 2009 that shows how many communities have been looking at this issue. So it needs to be updated because there are a lot of cities that are not even on this list. But back in 2009, it was a very hot topic and it continues to be a hot topic. And then I let the community know that around the world, a lot of countries have already taken action on banning plastic bags. So at this point, I tell the community, you know, when I do these presentations, everybody comes to me and says, you're right, we gotta get rid of plastic bags. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna switch to paper bags. That's the solution, right? And I have to tell them, actually, that is not the solution. Paper bags have an environmental impact that is bigger than plastic bags. They require a lot of trees and a lot of energy to make them. So no, that is not the solution. Um, and in fact, in San Jose, what we're proposing is to charge 10 cents for a paper bag uh, because we think that people might pay that the first time, but after a few times, they will start bringing their own bag. Um, and people nod their heads at that. People say, oh yeah, that makes sense. In some groups, uh, when this issue is really popular, when we're talking to like the real choir, like 
people, the, the residents who are really into this issue, and we've, we've, we put up the, the question, you know, what, do you, what is the amount that you would suggest that we charge as, as part of the stakeholder process? We're getting input from people. What would you charge? What do you think we should charge? Charge a dollar for a paper bag. Char you know, make it hurt. So you know, we thought that's, that's, thank you for that input. Um, we appreciate your uh, letting us know your opinion. So, but we didn't go with anything that high. Um, and that is the segue into the whole question of the environmental uh, impact report, um, uh, an, an, or the EIR. An EIR summarizes potential impacts. An EIR is generally done for a project like an apartment building being built or a new freeway that's being installed. So doing an EIR for a plastic bag ordinance is not the usual kind of thing that we that people do an EIR for, but there was a gentleman who was um, uh, suing cities on the basis of not doing an EIR, because he was saying if you do if you take action just on plastic bags and you don't address paper bags, and everybody switches over to paper bags, there will be an environmental impact from all that increased paper bag usage. So you have to do an EIR to describe those potential impacts. And the, un the, unfortunately, the California Supreme Court um, agreed with him on that. Um, so it summarizes the potential impacts. For us, it really came down to then estimating what is the behavior change that we can somehow try to predict in terms of if we charge a certain amount for paper bags, how many people are going to switch over to reusable bags? So that, is, that became kind of the crux of the issue. Um, and in the end, we d decided that the project that we were going to do the EIR on, the project would require a ban on plastic bags and the store charge on paper bags. Um, a lot of folks have asked me um, for the name of the consultant that did that EIR, and so their name is here, David J. Powers and Associates, here in San Jose. Um, the EIR looks at different categories of, of impact and summarizes them. Um, I was going to have the whole EIR here with me, and I just didn't pack it with me. It's a big old uh, document. It goes through each of these categories and describes that there is either uh, no impact or a beneficial impact. So it just summarizes all of that. This is the, the chart that shows the, um, our, the way that we try to get our arms around uh, what is the behavior change going to be based on the Im different amounts of of a charge on a paper bag and based on what has happened in other countries. Um, and the two things that are starred here, San Jose and Seattle, they're starred because um, these figures are there not because of, of any actual project. This, these are figures that we got when we did um, uh, a phone survey of the residents in San Jose. It was a random digit dial, statistically significant, if, if you were being charged 10 cents for a bag, would you uh, bring your own bag? Would that motivate you to bring your own bag? 81% of the population that we, that we phoned said yes, that would. Um, and then when it was 25, what if we charged 25 cents, then it was 90%. So um, uh, the, um, this also, there's a source there that's listed, Herrera Environmental Consultants was another, was the organization that did the bag fiscal, bag fee fiscal analysis report for the city. So I wanted to give a shout out to them as well. There's a lot more to say about behavior change and I'm going to keep going because there's, there's still more information. Um, this, this is a list of the EIR studies that, or the studies that were analyzed in the EIR. These are, some of them are life cycle analysis reports that are done, um, that have been done throughout the world. A lot of people will talk about the Boosted report, the CARE4 report. Um, uh, in the EIR, there's a section that also just summarizes all of these reports and talks about the pros and cons of including the results from these reports in the EIR. For example, the CAR4 is, is in French, um, and it's looking at waste treatment from a French context. How much of that is applicable in the United States? Not, probably not very much. It's a very different kind of um, way that they process. Um, the Franklin Associates report is a life cycle analysis that was done by the American Chemistry Council. So it's 
probably a little biased. The last one, the paper bags, a life cycle analysis was one that was done by the paper bag industry. So again, is there an independent uh, uh, life cycle analysis? Not really, not one that applies directly, but all of these reports have to be included because they are the reports that are out there. And this is not the complete list, there are more. I wanted to give, talk a little bit about metrics. We do have some ways of trying to measure what is uh, paper bag usage, um, paper bag, plastic bag, reusable bag usage in, in advance of the ordinance. And then in the years to come, we're going to be doing that evaluation um, after the ordinance goes into effect. So in partnership with Bayrock, Bayrock is a regional organization where um, a number of us put in a certain amount of money and are able to buy uh, media uh, that um, we buy it together and are able to get uh, more bang for our buck uh, because of that. The reusable bag issue has been a popular one with Bayrock and so all the cities in Bayrock have been doing what's called visual surveys, sitting out in front of a Safeway and just counting how many people are coming out with plastic bags, paper bags, reusable bags. Um, there's some litter assessment work that we've done in San Jose. The hot spots, tr trash and creeks work is always going to continue as part of the um, uh, stormwater permit. And then I wanted to mention the Great American Litter Pickup because that is um, an event where we actually ask um, uh, the volunteers if they have time, if they have the inclination, please count how many plastic bags you're picking up. Please count how many cigarette butts. Please count how many food containers you're seeing. So that information is great information, but it's from volunteers. And it's so it's it, some sites, we have so many sites throughout the city, and some sites there will be people there who, who will say, I totally want to help, and yes, I will count what, what I pick up. And then other sites, they don't give us any information at all. So, and because it's, it's information from volunteers, it's not being done in a really scientific way. So there's an asterisk um, next to that information, but it is some information that we are getting as well. Uh, the last piece is about implementation and what's going to happen in the next year. Um, council adopted the ordinance in December, and from here on until January of 2012, we're going to be doing, we're going to continue doing outreach to residents. We are doing outreach to uh, retailers, and then there's a little bit about enforcement. I'm just going to go to outreach to the residents is a lot of what we've continued, what we've been doing, but we are now going to be sitting in front of more Safeways and more malls. Um, giving out reusable bags, doing what we call is the, uh, the, the bag pledge, and that's where we give uh, somebody a bag and we ask them, if, could you, would you put your initials here when you take this bag, and by taking this bag, you are promising to shop with this bag when you go to the retail or grocery store. And people say, sure, yeah, that's a great idea, I can initial that, and they'll initial that. And the idea is that you're giving somebody a bag, but again, we're trying to do at least a little bit of public education every time we give somebody a bag. So that pledge also has some questions about, did you know that there's a ban on plastic bags in San Jose? A few other questions. Um, and they're, they're welcome to answer it or not. And then there's another, there's a last section that says, can we do follow up with you? And, and again, it's optional. People can say, no, I don't want you to follow up with me. And other people will say, you're going to follow up with me? And I'll, I'll, say, I'll tell them that, you know, if um, the, the, the idea behind kind of the social marketing is that if you are connected with a person and I say to you, I'm going to give you a call in a couple of months and see how it's going with your reusable bag, the idea is that you are going to be a little more on it in terms of using it because we've made that personal connection and somebody's actually gonna follow up with you. So I do have like 600, 700 phone calls to make now, but, um, <laughs> but we have interns and volunteers that help us with that. And those are really fun phone calls. We have been making phone calls and people are surprised that we're doing the follow up and we get, and it is, it is, it is the reminder. It's be, it's be, we're doing that because we get a whole lot of feedback of, I love this project, I think this is such a great idea, I always forget to bring my bag. So this is the reminder. Uh, that's the pledge. Outreach to retailers. We will be doing a mass mailing. That is probably the biggest expense um, to the 5,000 retailers, uh, small mom and pops, 7-Elevens, everybody. Uh, one big mailing in the next month or so, just to say the ordinance has been adopted. It will be going into effect. Be on the lookout for more information. 
The last, the last line is the one I want to highlight, business self-certification letter. This will be something that goes out closer to the, like in November, for example, where a business will sign a document that says, I understand that, bag, that plastic bags are banned. I will be implementing this law, this ordinance, um, starting January of, of 2012. So it's a way for them to acknowledge that they understand the ordinance and that they are going to be in compliance with it. It is something that just kind of gives us uh, something to follow up on when we do, if we get a call that a particular store has not gotten rid of plastic bags. We will be able to check our records to see, like, did they sign that self-certification? Did you get this in the mail? It was sent to you certified. We have records that you did receive it. Um, so the, or, the uh, enforcement will be complaint driven, and that is to say that um, uh, as, as all the information is getting out there, it will become obvious who is complying with the ordinance and who is not. And there are people out there, some of, maybe some people in this room, who will call in and let us know that uh, a particular store still is using plastic bags. We will then go out, do a visit, and again, the first visit is about education. Did you know that there's a ban on plastic bags in San Jose? Did you get this information? You need to be in compliance with this, and these are the fines that will go into effect um, if we get another call. So the, um, the fine amounts are um, listed in our, uh, I, it was, I think it's $500 for the first infraction, $750 after that, $1,000 after that. So the last call out is to the fact that this project in San Jose has been the product of um, partnerships with a lot of regional partners. A lot of you in this room have all, have all have been very involved, save the bay for, for sure. Um, could not have done it without them. Um, so again, the, the RWRC, the Board of Supervisors, and Bayrock. And then the last slide I wanted to highlight is um, the press event that we had in Sacramento. We are still looking for state legislation on this issue. The more cities that implement a, a ban, um, uh, the better the chances that we're going to have a, a state, um, uh, that we're gonna have state legislation. So I guess now I'm gonna take questions. Yes. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, so the question, so, so what happened at this event, so the question was um, uh, that, uh, this is our representative from Senator Lowenthal's office, and you live in Sacramento County and you weren't aware that Sacramento County was moving forward on a bag ban. The event in Sacramento was for cities that, cities and counties that wanted to put it onto their agenda in the coming months. So it's not that they're necessarily, some of these cities, Milpitas, for example, is moving forward. They're, they are doing a study. But, other, but the cities that are listed here are at different stages of, of some kind of implementation. In, in some ways, for some cities, just getting it onto a, a council agenda is, is enough for them to have been standing up there with us and in solidarity that we're all gonna be trying to do something on this issue. Emmy, um, thanks for the presentation. Um, the EIR, or actually the whole process, do we have estimated costs for the city of San Jose on that? Yeah. And then a second question, follow up that, um, is what can the cities, other cities who are contemplating this really learn from the EIR or use pieces of the EIR? Absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and if so, kind of how much do you, do you think that would offset their cost of, of basically what you guys have already done and led the way? Yeah. Um, for us, the cost on the for the EIR ended up being about one hundred and forty thousand dollars. So, but what? But for other cities, I'd, I'm not sure how much lower the cost would be. But I would, but I would say that the groundwork has been done, so that any consultant that's going to come on board and tr and and take our EIR and kind of make it particular to your jurisdiction or to a to a different jurisdiction, is going to have a lot less work ahead of them. I'm not sure how much. Question over here and there and 
Hi, Jenny with PlasticBagLaws.org. Um, I'd just like to clarify one point with the EIR. Mm -hmm. The California Supreme Court has not ruled yet. It's still The question's still before the court. Oh, okay. So an oral argument should be um, scheduled in the next month or so, and that should... So right now, the EIR, the question of whether it's needed is not absolutely set in stone, and Marin County has moved forward with a um, categorical exemption. So... If anyone would like to look at my website, plasticbaglaws.org, I have a lot of information about that particular subject. Thanks. Jenny's got great information on her website. Thank you, and my name is Angela from the city of Monterey. Our community is smaller, although we have a lot of tourists and, a, and there are two military facilities, but we're actually considering banning bags throughout the entire city, so that means fast food, it means everything. And I think, actually, I talked to Leslie about it a while ago to maybe steer away from that. Do you have any input on that? Uh, we were kind of just going for the big gusto at this point. But So in San Jose, we did not ban plastic bags at restaurants. Um, we felt that that was one um, uh, sector where a reusable bag is less practical, especially when food is wet and potentially drippy and all those kinds of questions. I think there was partially also a, a, a sense that we are going to be looking at that sector for polystyrene food um, containers uh, for a ban, so that on so that we will be addressing that sector on for that for those products. So we did keep them out of the plastic bag ban. Um, uh, that I don't know if that really answers your question in terms of. Going for the gusto is great. Sure, we totally want to encourage that, and I think. Um, different jurisdictions throughout California are, are um, the universe of retailers that the plastic bag ban applies to is different in different cities. In Los Angeles, I believe it's for the large grocery stores and the convenience stores, and that's it. They haven't gone for like the whole gamut of all retailers. San Jose has gone for the whole gamut of all retailers, um, but different, again, ju different jurisdictions are looking at different different sizes of universe. Leslie, did you want to add something to that? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, I think it depends a lot on the political will of your particular council and the strength of the opposition in your particular city. Some cities do not have um, the surplus opposition from the restaurant associations or from um, the retailers. Others did. LA County felt it would kill their bill to get the retailers also banging against it on top of the American Chemistry Council and everything else. So I think it's an individual calculation. There isn't a right or a wrong answer. I will, however, observe that legislation is incremental. And if you feel that your council members are not going to be able to stand up to absolutely everybody in their district banging on their door, um, I would say at least start with a component that you think you can get across the finish line. And in future years, you can certainly amend that. Certainly, that is the strategy at the state level. So, um, you know, and I apologize, I don't remember the individual context of our conversation. You know, I'm listening to you and I'm thinking, wow, if you're in Monterey, at least the aquarium shouldn't be handing out plastic bags. So maybe you could get them thrown in there, if not all retailers. Um, but it is an individual calculation. I just also want to respond to the gentleman who was asking about the EIR. And I know that San Jose designed their EIR to be able to be used and replicated. And there are significant sections of the EIR that you can take whole cloth, individual statements of your city's situation, components of ER would have to be redone. I think it would be very interesting for you to share with a group from a legal analysis of your city's attorneys what they think it would cost to redo those sections. My guess is significantly less than the cost of the EIR. Certainly LA County designed their EIR, and I know that's not a Bay Area EIR, but they designed theirs to be done that way. Um, so their 88 cities could use it and replicate it easily with low cost. We understand cities don't have money for this. And the Green Cities California has on its website the master environmental assessment, which is part of an EIR you know, reference documentation that certainly is available to all cities. So when you hear that big number, do not be dissuaded initially. Do some more investigation and speak to people like Emmy specifically with your city attorneys and find out um, because the thought of large cities and counties is to make their materials able to be replicated easily by those of you who do not have legal resources. 
question. Oh. Thank you. That Stop Waste has just um, contracted with Powers to do an EIR that will be countywide and city specific for all 17 jurisdictions in, in the Stop Waste Agency. That's Alameda County, so that's great. Yeah, yeah no, it's right. exciting. And I, I can't keep adding more, na like, you know, changes every day, so it's great. Derek Crutchfield, City of Vallejo. Um, how do you get past that that initial fear that council members and everyone has when you hear lawsuit? I mean, because the minute I mentioned lawsuit, it was like, forget it, you know? Um, yeah, that's that has been, <laughs> well, that, uh, the, yeah, the, the, it's interesting because, I mean, we could talk, there's so much to say about that, but maybe the, the, the saving uh, statement I'd like to make on that is that the person that has been suing all the cities has had a window of time to um, file a lawsuit and that window of time has expired. So, because, and since we have actually done the whole EIR, this one person, I don't know if, do you feel like he could still come back? I mean, he could still come back. They could always. So Jenny says we're safe, but, but I, I um, uh, so, so, so there is that, there is that one gentleman who, um, and I use the term loosely, uh, who, 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 who sues, who, yeah, he's a very nice guy, um, uh, who, who sues on the grounds of not having done an EIR. So we have done an EIR and the timeline for him to sue based on that has come and gone. And our, our attorney's office is like, have you heard from, I'm like, I have not heard anything. So I, and I believe that is, a same, that, that is the case with LA as well. But I mean, it's an expensive process that, uh, you know, to, to force cities to do an EIR. So it sounds like Marin is, is gonna go out on a limb. Thank you. There's lots more questions. Um, I just have two quick questions. Thank you so much. This was very informative. I'm with Save Our Shores, and I'm working with Angela and Monterey, as well as Santa Cruz, to make this happen. Two questions. One is, do you have any more information about the lack of a market for recycled bags? This is the biggest argument the ACC keeps coming back to us with, that we should just recycle bags more. If we had some facts about how there are not markets for this material, I think that would really help our case. Um, I don't. I don't have a like a, a great answer for you on that, but I will say that the uh, maybe to talk with your MRFs um, and find out what kind of markets, what kind of the, the information that we've been getting is that a MRF can get about forty to sixty dollars per ton for of plastic bags. It's at that point when I tell the community that that I hold up a flimsy little plastic bag and say, "Can you imagine how much work it takes to collect a ton of these, and they have to be clean? Mm -hmm. This is not." That's why this is a problem product. So if they're getting forty to sixty dollars for a ton, that seems like not that seems like a lot of work for not very much money. Mm -hmm. And that's and the markets for for recycled materials are volatile. And so when the economy took a big uh, downturn, this pile of of plastic bags was being stockpiled at a materials recovery facility, and they had to call somebody and had to pay to have somebody take it away. There was less than, there was no market, it was an expense for them. Hmm. So I think doing some research with, with MRFs about how much are you guys getting for this? The MRFs want to see this stuff go away. Right, right. Great. And then just another quick question. I love your idea about sending that certified letter to businesses to mm -hmm. have them sign on. Was there any requirement for them to return that to you uh, or any kind of penalty if they didn't, just hoping that they would and be more aware of it? Okay, great. Thank you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, M Melody's in charge of our watershed. I think there's a... Hi, good morning, Melody, City of San Jose. Uh, we will be doing the enforcement over in the watershed protection side of environmental services uh, across from EMI. And we are gonna ask them to send back a self-certification as we get closer to the ordinance to acknowledge that they fully have read and understand it. We've been told it's not the most enforceable thing we'll ever do in the world, um, but, but it will put that muscle memory in, into a, a responsible business owner's uh, uh, hand and in their mind that they've at least read and acknowledged the ordinance prior to our active enforcement. Uh, 
Jenny again. Um, just one point regarding the plastic bag recycling. It is the ACC's favorite issue. So I'm working with um, their bills in the state legislature in Vermont and Maryland, and the AC is really pounding them there about plastic bag recycling. So I'm developing a comment letter and talking points for them. So I can save, share that with you if you'd like. And my website has updated information. Um, and interesting, one interesting point is that China actually moved to ban the import of contaminated plastic bags and film in 2008 because it's so dirty that they don't want to process it. So the real market is just um, film, fil clean films that have not been used, um, and that's really a point that's overlooked. And even the EPA's statistics, I think it was 6.1% of plastic bags were recycled. That included all... Um, films that surrounded packaging and shipping, and those statistics were actually developed by the ACC and given to the EPA. So, recent information. Learning new things. Um, just one additional point, or a couple additional points about bag recyclability. U.S. EPA statistics are that less than 6.1 percent are recycled. Um, individual California Integrated Waste Management Board statistics hover between 1 to 5 percent. Important distinction. Just because they can be recycled doesn't mean that they are. So the American Chemistry Council likes to say they are recyclable, but the practical reality is that they are not recycled nationwide. These statistics indicated, and as I indicated earlier in my comments, California's own recycling law, AB 2449, um, failed miserably. And even years after its implementation, the Integrated Waste Management Board, now renamed CalRecycle, cannot authoritatively say with the problems beset by the process of reviewing the data and everything else that the law had going for it wrong, um, they can't even conclusively say that the law worked. So I think when, when the American Chemistry Council comes at you with st statistics like that, you can cite to Jenny's fact sheet that you can get off of her website. You can cite to EPA statistics um, from a long time ago. You can cite to California's own statistics about how many bags really are recycled. And you can cite to the failure of California's own attempt to do recycling. And San Francisco's. And San Francisco's. Jack Macy is here. Maybe he wants to comment if, if San Francisco has statistics. Well, uh, Jack Macy here. Uh, when we did ours, which was about uh, over three years ago, you know, we claimed around a 1% recovery rate. Uh, and you know, there was some sort of debate about that. But I remember being, being in a forum with uh, Trex, which is, makes the plastic lumber. They're the, and they said, yeah, we're by far the primary market. Like a very high percentage of plastic film was going to Trex. And their numbers nationwide were about 1% of plastic bags. So I said, okay, well, that kind of confirms. <laughs> the, and, and, but the thing is that then you have the fact that, uh, and they actually uh, stated this too, that a large percentage of that was actually shrink wrap off of retail packaging. So I, I think uh, one to two percent is the most that's being recycled. And there's really no evidence that we're doing any better with, or any significantly better with 2449. All right, thank you. On that note, we are going to conclude this morning's sessions. And thank you very much, Jimmy. That was an excellent presentation. And also to all of our morning speakers.